What's going on guys, it's Cameron from CamD Gaming coming at you with some more gaming news. Today I'll be breaking down what you need to know about the upcoming Apex Legends Limited Time Voidwalker event, which comes with new map changes, a new game mode, challenges, free loot, and direct purchase legend skins. All of that is coming up. Alright guys, so Respawn is bringing us another limited time event called Voidwalker, which is going to run for two weeks, from September 3rd to September 17th. Now this upcoming event probably seems a little familiar in how it's designed, and that's because it is. If you remember, the recent Iron Crown event also brought a new game mode, which was solos, cool new skins, and a new area of the map called Gauntlet, which was Octane themed. The new Voidwalker event will basically have a lot of the same stuff, but Wraith themed. For example, there's going to be a new area of the map, what Respawn calls Town Takeovers, that revolves around Wraith's backstory. The official description explains that Syndicate construction crews have unearthed part of a decayed Project Wraith facility in Kings Canyon. Jump in to discover for yourself the mysterious remains of the research site, including a functional prototype portal that can be used to get an early jump on the base, or to escape and reinitiate skydive. And be sure to keep an eye out for other hidden lore details. Now for me, I think this is the most interesting part of the upcoming event. Mechanically, I'm really interested to see how permanent portals in one part of the map will work, and especially the ability to reinitiate skydive. Will that start you skydiving from above the new Project Wraith facility, or some other part of the map, or maybe from the original dropship? If it's from the original dropship, then it would seem like you could only use that skydive portal while the ship is still on its flight path right at the beginning of the game. Either way, it definitely sounds like this new area will have some killer loot and quick escape routes for early game, quick grab and go strategies. I think it's also safe to assume that the new area of the map will be here to stay since Octane's Gauntlet is still around, even after the Iron Crown event ended. Now let's talk about the limited time game mode that's dropping called Armed and Dangerous. This mode limits weapons to snipers and shotguns while overall loot is much harder to come by. This should be pretty interesting, especially since a lot of players feel there's a current longbow meta in the game giving everybody snipers might even the playing field a bit. This new game mode is also tied into the event challenges, which come with free loot, if you're willing to grind for it. The free loot is broken down into two tiers, each with four challenges and corresponding unlocks. The first tier has pretty basic requirements. Play armed and dangerous, you don't even need to win, just play it, for a Voidwalker badge. Get 30 headshots for 30 crafting medals. Win once in any mode for a Wraith loading screen. And complete seven dailies during the event for a G7 skin. Completing seven dailies is going to take a minimum of three days to do because the game only gives you three daily challenges per day. Tier 2 ups the ante a bit, but it still doesn't seem insanely difficult. Win five armed and dangerous for a cool armed and dangerous badge, get 60 more headshots, which means you'll need 90 total, 30 from tier 1 and 60 more from tier 2, to unlock 30 more crafting medals, win once as three different characters in any mode for a Wraith music pack, and complete 14 more dailies, which means you'll need 21 total, 7 from tier 1 and 14 more from tier 2, for another G7 skin. To complete all of the dailies from tier 1 and tier 2 for these challenges would take a minimum of 7 days, which isn't too bad since the event runs for 2 weeks. Last but not least is the Direct Purchase Shop, which appears to be the only way to unlock the cool new Legendary Wraith skin, as well as some other Legend and Weapon skins. If you wanted to buy everything available for direct purchase, it would cost 5,300 Apex tokens, or roughly $53 US. If you just want the Legendary Raid skin, it would be $18. Now personally, I kind of wish there was a way to get at least one character skin for free. It doesn't even have to be the Legendary Raid skin, and it could even require a ton of grinding, like say, win 28 Armed and Dangerous games, which would be like two wins a day during the entire event. But don't get me wrong, I know the devs have got to make money somehow and that there is still some free stuff to obtain, but I'm just not really a fan of the trend that puts nearly all new character skins behind a paywall. That's just my two cents though. That pretty much wraps up what you need to know before this event drops. If you learned something from this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And also, I'm curious what you all think about this event and the challenges versus direct purchase setup. Let me know in a comment below. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we will see you in the next video.